Yemen has an extraordinary cultural heritage. Centuries of history and civilization have come down to us through the monuments spread through this part of the Arabian Peninsula. Together with natural beauty, the cultural heritage attracts thousands of visitors every year and represents a major resource of economic development for the country's future. Driving three hours south of Sana'a, the capital, we come to Rada, which is in the center of a plain surrounded by rugged mountains. In the past, this rough and mountainous territory was an important center of the region, so that Sultan Amir of the Taridi dynasty decided in 1503 to build one of the most eclectic madrasas of the region, the Amariya Madrasa. The madrasa is a jewel of Islamic art and architecture. It is conceived as a monumental rectangle 40 meters long, 23 meters wide, and three stories high. The first floor houses the prayer hall, which is small and well proportioned, with two central pillars supporting the six domes that rise two stories above. Every wall in the hall is richly decorated with elaborate and brightly colored tempera wall paintings, as well as stucco work. The paintings cover a surface of 600 square meters. They represent a unique example of Islamic decorative motifs, being a synthesis of 500 years of wall painting tradition in Yemen, with further input of elements from Indian artistic tradition. At the end of the 1970s, the monument was in a state of total neglect and was close to destruction. Earthquakes had damaged the structures and plaster. Water had flowed over the paint, causing heavy detachment. The crystallization of soluble salts disintegrated the plaster and paint layer. All the surfaces were blackened by layers of dust and lamp black. Extensive areas were covered with layers of whitewash. The entire hall showed such decay and neglect that it was difficult to discern the beauty of the paintings and make out the decorative scheme. This was the situation in 1970, when Selma al-Radi, a major name in Middle Eastern archaeology, decided to organize the restoration project that brought the Amiria Madrasa back to its former splendor in 22 years. The work was funded by the Yemeni government, the Netherlands and Italy. Once the structures were restored, the delicate problem of the wall paintings still had to be resolved. For this purpose, the CCA, Centro di Conservazione Archeologica of Rome, was called in 2000, as they had already been working in the Middle East in the field of monuments conservation. In the course of three years, 25 conservator restorers, assisted by local personnel, carried out the 10,000 workdays needed to restore 600 square meters of refined Islamic painting to its original magnificence. In tempera painting, the artists of the past used organic binders, such as glue, egg or milk, to give body to the color and make it adhere to the plaster of the support. As the centuries go by, the organic binder deteriorates and no longer performs its function. In such a case, the color reverts to powder, as was the situation with the Amaria paintings. Time also had its impact on this powdery color, for layers of dust and smoke from oil lamps and candles were deposited. Earthquakes, structural movements and water infiltration then detached the plaster from the walls and caused irremediable loss of the original decoration. These are some of the problems the conservators had to face every day in the restoration of the Amiria paintings. Through delicate operations of consolidation, cleaning, glazing, micro stuccoing and filling of lacunae, the painted surface slowly regained legibility and consistency returning to shine in its decorative forms, even though it still bore the signs of time.
All the surfaces were first dusted with sable or soft bristle brushes and the deposits being removed were vacuumed up at the same time. Where whitewash thickly covered the paintings, it was necessary to remove it mechanically with scalpels, gradually reducing the thickness until it was all gone, usually softening the layer with packs of water, alcohol and acetone mixed in equal parts. In the areas where there were denser layers of dust, the cleaning was performed with Wishob sponges, special restoration sponges made of a soft material based on synthetic latex. The combined action of dusting with a brush and using the sponge permitted the satisfactory removal of most of the deposits, ensuring a homogeneous and balanced presentation of the surfaces. In the areas affected by lamp black deposits and carbonated layers, it was necessary to use repeated applications of a solvent mixture of ethyl alcohol, ammonia, acetone and water, which was left to act on the surface through paper tissues for a few minutes. A highly delicate operation involved the consolidation of the paint layer and the layers of plaster. Where the paint was raised, the flakes of color were made to re-adhere to the plaster by impregnating them with acrylic resin diluted in water. Consolidation of detachments between the plaster and the wall support called for the use of a consolidating material based on hydraulic lime, which was injected with syringes. Supporting braces were applied to shore up the zones as they were consolidated, permitting the progressive anchoring of the surfaces and avoiding any collapse during the operations. The lacunae in the plaster were stuccoed with a mortar made of lime and gypsum. This operation restored integrity and homogeneity to the plaster, improving both its strength and aesthetic appearance. Adiki. 